Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video. Uh, this is a tag video for Tag Tuesday but I'm going to put it, oh it is Tuesday because yesterday was a bank holiday so yeah uh, it's a rapid response video because Sean the book maniac has just put out the latest in his alphabet soup series tags and this is um, the letter F. I will post links to my previous versions of Sean's alphabet soup tags and F stands for for F is for fictionalise. Okay. Prompt one has three parts to it. F is for fictionalise. Any or all of these. A, your take on autofiction. B, the writer you'd like to write a novel based on your life. And or C, a work of autobiograph <laughs> a work of autobiographical fiction you'd recommend. Well, uh, your take on autofiction, no such thing. Uh, all fiction is effectively autofiction because all writers are writing from their experience. You can't write about something you haven't experienced. And my definition of experience would be even if you've researched something like, I don't know, the life cycle of flies that you don't know about. But once you've taken the trouble to spend part of your life reading and committing to memory and digesting it uh, in order to put it in your book... It does become part of your experience, not an experience you've lived, but it's part of your experience. So writers cannot write outside their experience. Therefore, all fiction is based on a writer's personal experience. So the, the autofic is tautologous. It has no real meaning. There is a spectrum of those writers who do the bare minimum to change their material of their experience, all the way through to those who heavily... Uh, mutate, disguise, put through a metaphorical ringer, you know, what, however you want to put it. And I, I think the more successful writers are those who do more work on their personal material than those who sort of light touch it, because it has more chance of being, you know, universal, of being less subjective to one's own personal experience. Anyway, that's just my opinion, false writers ever. Um, the writer you'd like to write a novel based on your life. I, I don't really have a concept of this, nor do I have a concept of a actor playing me in a film of my life. Um, so just to the end of it, uh, for this question, I'm going to say either William Burroughs or Samuel Beckett. Uh, Beckett because I like what he does with despair and language. Burroughs because I've just reread uh, The Last Words of Dutch Schultz, which is um, written as a film screenplay and is rather good. So... Um, yeah, if, if, it was going, if my life had to be done, I'd quite like Burroughs to do it in, a, in his subversive way as a film script. Uh, the shortcoming of both of these are, of course, dead. And um, the third part is a work of autobiographical fiction you'd recommend. Well, this is slightly contentious. Uh, this is The Years by Annie Erno. Now, Fitzcarraldo have two cover designs. They have this for the non-fiction, this sort of off-white or ivory, whatever you call it. And they have blue uh, for their fiction. So this, you know, putatively is non-fiction. And yet it got submitted to the uh, Man Booker International uh, whenever it came out. And that is for fiction. So I think that the, the way to sort of salvage that, that sort of sleight of hand is to say that this is auto-fiction. And it is sort of auto-fiction, but what I like about it is it's very subversive to the whole concept of auto-fiction. Because Annie Eno is telling the story of her life, of her 50, 60 years, however old she is. But it's really the biography, as much as it's the autobiography of her, it's the biography of the country France and all the changes in culture and politics and life that uh, and sort of consumerism and site you know technology that it went through during the period of her life and and, and the, the up front and central is france's story more than hers and i i really really like it i highly recommend this book Pump, uh, prompt two f is for farm a great book set on a farm or about farming and or one you want to read well um in case you're new to my channel i'm urban I don't like books about the countryside or about farm, uh, about farming. Having said that, I read this recently, The Discomfort of Evening, by Marieke Lucas Reinwald from Holland. It is set on a farm. The author themselves lived and grew up on a farm. Um, and, dis you know, despite my sort of phobia of all things rural, um, this wasn't half bad. Uh, I think what I liked about it was 
the metaphors uh, of sort of life on the farm, of nature, of animals, transposing to, to the sort of human interactions and the human relationships. It's pretty, it's pretty ugly, it's pretty brutal, but I thought it was effective because uh, the writer is a poet first and foremost, and I thought it was quite, the language was, and the imagery particularly was quite poetic. So I'm not in a rush to read any other farming novels, maybe one every decade will do me, but I did read this. Uh, I'll post the link to my review of it. Um, three, F is for Frank, Franz, Franny, or a writer you recommend or want to read whose first and or last name starts with F. Bonus points for both first and last name. Well, um, there is only one F that I, you know, who has to be read at all costs, otherwise, you know, what are you doing? That's Franz Kafka. This is the metamorphosis. And uh, he's just the man for me. But there are lots of other F uh, authors I recommend. William Faulkner. Absalom, Absalom, which I haven't read. That's my Faulkner for this year. He's quite a tough read. He's definitely a modernist. Uh, and that makes his books quite challenging. So, and this is supposed to be one of his hardest. So I'm looking forward to that. Michel Faber. Uh, fabulous author. I mean, two of his books are in my sort of all-time top reads. One is Under the Skin. The other is um, The Book of Strange New Things. Uh, I picked this one up because it's got an F in the title. Um, now, this is, a, this is an interesting one. Jonathan Safran Foer, two Fs in his name. That's why I've, I've picked these books up. Uh, Safran has an F and Foer obviously begins with F. So, um, would I recommend him though? Well, these are his first two novels and they're great. I really like them. But ever since then, they've been diminishing returns and he had that sort of mind fart of the whole Natalie Portman thing which go online if you don't know what I mean. Uh, and he's never been the sense. He's never been the same since because the book that came out after that was called Here I Am and it's one of the worst books I've ever read. But Sean, you you know, you said the more Fs in the name the better, the more bonus points and I'm competitive, so two there. Okay. Um Four, F is for the love of God, an experience of extreme exasperation while reading about a book in its entirety or a smaller section thereof. Okay. I think uh, Sean mentioned that in, in his first ever uh, Alphabet Soup uh, video, there was also a question quite similar to this about sort of an exasperating read. Now, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I would have chosen um, Sarah Moss's uh, Ghost Wall because I felt that it was, its politics and its logic were just so deeply flawed, I couldn't get beyond that. This, The Music, Love, Drugs, War by Geraldine Quigley, uh, is exasperating for much more, on a much more micro scale, uh, micro scale of, of the writing, of the sentence construction, of the use of metaphors, of the choreography, how she moves characters around. Uh, I finished this last week. It so exasperated me. I did, a thir I think, a 30-minute, no, maybe not as long as that, 22-minute long video explaining why it contains so much sort of types of writing that I don't like. I will um, put the link to that video if you want a, a, an even-toned rant, I've called it, um, about this book and its writing. But, yeah, it was exasperating. It's not the only one of its kind, but it just so happened to be the one that I read most recently, and is the most egregious in committing so many writing sins. Um, F is for Find, a book with lots of Fs in the title, bonus points for more than two. Well, I couldn't find more than two. Now, this book uh, crops up in, in this question on every letter, because it's the one question that appears in every one of the versions of these of these tags. Uh, and, it, it, you know, it's such a long title. Your Fathers, Where Are They? And The Prophets, Do They Live Forever? by Dave Eggers. So we have F in Fathers and F in Forever. Um, so only two, though, sadly. I think one of, one of the prompts I had lots. But, you know, it's a bit of a cheat, because I use it in, in virtually every answer to this question in the tags. But Eggers has done another book. Heroes of the Frontier, of and Frontier. So we've got two in that one. And finally, The Fowler Family Business by Jonathan Meads. Fowler and Family. Um, uh, what a dark book this is. It's set in a family of morticians. And it's, it's dark comedy, to say the least. Um, six, F is for Father. A work of fiction in which fatherhood is a central concern. Well, going back to Metamorphosis... If I can 
grab it from the pile. And um, fatherhood is is there in everything that Kafka writes because his father looms so large in his mental makeup. The father is not central in this because it is very much about the family reacting to the fact that Gregor Samsor has metamorphosed metamorphosized into a giant bug. But the father sets off all the action when he throws an apple core at his son because he's so disgusted by him. And the apple sort of, you know, lodges itself in his son and sort of, you know, rots and festers. I mean, what an image of, what an Oedipal image that is. And, you know, Kafka writes about wounds a lot, wounds caused in the son by the father, whether it's a metaphorical wound or an actual wound. So I would say, in a way, this is about father, but it wasn't actually my choice. My choice is, is this, Travelling in a Strange Land by David Park, a Northern Ireland writer, which crept into my the lower echelons or the upper echelons, no, the lower echelons of my top ten reads of last year. And the story is of, uh, it's a sort of, you know, the whole country is in lockdown because of a snowstorm. A father has to drive from Northern Ireland to uh, the northeast of England. So obviously there's going to be a ferry crossing involved in that as well. Through these terrible weather conditions because his son is, is ill at university with the flu and it's Christmas or about to be Christmas. And the father doesn't want his son to be alone feeling sick uh, over the Christmas period and it's it's a meditation it reminded me of that film Locke um, play, uh, what's his name Hardy um, there are other characters in here unlike in Locke but it's very much that sort of enclosed in your car and the thoughts and it's about it's a meditation on family and fatherhood it's, it's terrific um, Ah, F is of Finland, a book set in or by a Finnish author you'd recommend or would like to try. I have to come back to this because I haven't done my research. I can honestly say I don't have any Finnish authors in my collection. I'll come back to that. F is of Fangirl, a new or new to you writer you're really excited about. Well, I actually used the word Fangirl um, in my in my review of, of Anne Carson. Yeah, I know you all know who Anne Carson is, but I was rather put off by the sobriquet poet, so I, I avoided her. But I uh, read a book blogger's review of this, Decreation, said it right up my street. So impressed that I went and got plain water. And in my review of this, which I'll publish, uh, or I'll give the link to, I should say, I actually use the word fango. I have become a fango. I want to read something else by her. The, the one that everyone recommends is the one with dragon or red dragon or whatever in the title. Now, I have a slight problem with that because, you know, I loathe and hate everything to do with dragons in literature. They have no place in literature. In fact, they have no place in, in conception. Chim chimeras do, but dragons don't. But anyway, getting getting away from that. Um, so if anyone can persuade me that I should still go for it, I know it's Anne Carson, so it won't be a straight thing about a dragon, quite clearly. Um, but I hope it's not all about sort of you know the dragon in 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 myth and and all that essays on thereof. Anyway, I am a fan of, and uh, but I have read her. So an author beginning with F who I haven't read. Is Fernando Pessoa, The Book of Disquiet. Now, this was supposed to be a buddy read with about four other people last year, and we all chickened out of it. Um, we didn't have the coronavirus as an excuse. Um, we were all just a bit intimidated by it, because it's, it's supposed to be very fragmentary, very sort of postmodern. Um, but, you know, I will get to it at some point. But am I excited to read it? Well, clearly not, because I postponed it. Um... F is a fling. You loved one book by this writer, but nothing else. Well, I have a slight variation on that. The author is Tibor Fisher. So his book, The Fort Gang, was the first book of his I read and loved it. It's a really funny, you know, clever book about uh, a group of bank robbers in France. Um, but they, they're very philosophical and they sort of, you know... Uh, have so Socratic dialogues about what they do in between the robberies and stuff. It's it's very good. So I thought I'll go and check out other things by him. And I got Voyage to the Edge of the Room, End of the Room, The Collector Collector, which were okay, not as not as good as as the Thought Gang. And there there wasn't that much else out by him. And then last year I managed to see in the second hand bookshop Tibor Fisher How to Be Good. And then after a, a bit of a hiatus. His new book, uh, How to Rule the World, came out last January. And uh, they're terrible. They're really, really dire. So bad. I mean, this is so misanthropic. And this is just 
they're so bad that I no longer want to read Tibor Fischer. Um, so yeah, definitely diminishing returns from his excellent first book. Okay, sorry about that hiatus. Uh, my camera battery died, so I just had to do a partial recharge. Um, on with the prompts. Nine F. Uh, sorry, ten F is for friends, a novel that satisfyingly explores friendship. So I'm going to talk about this book, The Antiquarian, by Peruvian Gustavo Favaron Patrial. And uh, I hadn't heard of this book, but uh, adopting yet another Sure the Book Maniac book tag, which is the page 112 challenge. Brian and Bookish uh, and me swapped um, four page 112 samples with each other and I think we each got a book out of it and this is the one I got that I really liked, uh, the page 112. Um, it's an unusual take on friendship in that uh, two friends who sort of fall out of touch with one another uh, as the behaviour of one of them gets uh, sort of increasingly strange to the point that he stabs his girlfriend and ends up in an insane asylum but uh, he reaches out to his friend and his friend sort of comes to visit him and really is sort of hanging on in there to the vestiges of his memory of of their friendship because it, he is faced by a altogether sort of strange creature that he doesn't understand but the the one who's been committed has asked him to look into the you know the the events of this murder because they're deeper truths lie there and that's exactly what he does it's a it's a fabulous book uh, and I, one i like to think also symbolizes my virtual online friendship with brian over at bookish so uh all about friendship and i keep forgetting this wretched question about uh, a finnish novel um that is a novel from finland not a novel that has been finished because hopefully all novels have been finished so um i did a bit of research on this and i've come up with my cat yugoslavia a novel, a debut novel by Pachim Statovitsky, um, who was a Kosovan born but uh, raised in Finland, and the novel is in Finnish, so I feel that it, it qualifies for this. Although it is ostensibly about the breakup of, of former Yugoslavia and feeling uh, an outsider in your in your society, um, it sounds a bit surreal, but you know. Um, I would be interested in reading that. came out by the look of it in 2017 because I'm looking at a Guardian review. So that's my answer for that one. And finally, uh, 11, F is for far and wide, tag feverishly. Well, I have done all five of these, or six, however many it is, uh, and tagged people on each of them. So I've kind of run out of people to tag. And also Sean has sort of ever extended uh, the invitation uh, with his. So basically the whole of Booktube, uh, apart from possibly the YA corner, has been tagged by now. Um, but as Sean says, if you fancy doing this, uh, please do, and then go back and do the other alphabet letters because it's a great tag once you get the swing of it because you don't really have to think different from tag to tag to tag. It's very much a sort of beautifully sealed whole. And it just gives you the excuse to talk about lots and lots of different books in each one. Okay, so thanks very much to Sean and uh, till next time.